Namaste. Welcome to Youth TV Show. In today's episode, we have with us a very special guest from Switzerland, Mr. Daniel Shudi. He is the co-founder of famed Congress associations and management agencies like the MCI and the Spectrum. He is also the former member from the European Council of MPI and the Switzerland Tourism Board. Career Counseling Center has an objective that whoever comes to us for mentoring succeeds in life. Today, our counselor will be sharing his invaluable experiences and will be advising students on the acceptance of change in life, more than one career step possible. I thought about six values, six elements, and I understand you being 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, maybe this is a little bit difficult uh, to imply immediately, to use, to, to bring into immediate action. But if you can take it down and if you can put it in your DNA, it will help you eventually to become the flexible person that I would like you to be. Flexibility is above everything in today's world. First one would be, if I look at my career, I would say one thing that guided me was to, to, to trust in myself, the energy to believe in myself, the, the focus to, be me, to, to believe in myself. I tell you, this is not only valid for, for the society, uh, for the group, this is also valid for you individual. Second point that I put down is, of course, difficult again sometimes, travel, venture, go out, explore the world immediately. And not only the world, explore Nepal, travel, meet different people. Is that difficult sometimes? Yes. It always almost became an obsession for me now to travel, even at my age, at my high age, to go and see new countries. And I continuously, I continuously do that. The third one is, of course, English, global English. I'm talking about proper English. Work on your English all your life. And I can, I can give you an encouragement. I never went to school. I never went to English school. I went to English school in basic, in a, in a primary school, uh, secondary school. We went to English three years, but this is, hello, my name is Daniel. The rest was my travels and the people I met. My fourth point is, of course, indoors changes. Again, maybe in your momentum of life, changes is the, the ability to change is maybe not yet the most important tool that you have, but learn to accept that everything is changed. The fifth point, choose your friends, choose your communities. Besides the fact that, that I traveled, continuously met people, that I lived in different places. But I think overall that was probably the most important learning. Sixth one would be, yeah, maybe directly related to number five. There are role models along the way. It was in the quality of people that you meet, that you choose to be with in, in life and in business. You meet powerful, strong, motivate, motivational people, listen to them, go with them. Even if maybe you follow those role models only for, for a certain time. What are the essential skills to flourish the tourism sector in the global perspective? Communication is number one. Respect is a key issue. Respect the other people, but to respect different nations, be it tourists, be it group tours, Chinese group tours or American individuals. To respect that, I think you have to respect yourself first. The fundamental skills is being interested about other people and other nations and, and seeing how they do things, the Americans and the Swiss and this is so funny and the Nepalese and, and to be amused and entertained by the differences of, of, of people and, 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 uh, and groups. So I think in tourism you've got to have a certain love for other people, other countries. But if tourism is your objective then it should be for other reasons because you you will be entertained meeting the people and not only that, you will be entertained by representing Nepal. You get different returns if you work in tourism. When you start something new, there's always this in uncertainty about how it's going to turn out. So how do you deal with that uncertainty? You don't deal with it. 
the end, at the end of the day, if you have a great idea, if you have an objective, if you want to get married, if you, if you want to spend two years learning a language abroad, you, you have to try, you have to dare, you have to go. Uh, you cannot sit at home and fear about the chances that it's not going to work. This would be as if I come to Nepal and say, oh, it's going to be an earthquake. Oh my God, maybe tonight it's going to be an earthquake. Oh my God, maybe tomorrow it's going to be an earthquake. If the fear will eat you up, to take risks in life is very important. As you being the pioneer of the tourism and hospitality industry, how to regain the flow of the tourist in post-disaster situation? First of all, yes, tourism is not the only industry. You are the best one to explore that and find out. Secondly, um, it's about waves. You know, we all come to these catastrophic situations. All of us. All of us. And as, as, as I walked yesterday the old town and I saw some of this devastation and rubbles and it was really heartbreaking. Uh, but I know as a, as, a, as a world traveler we all face it, situ such situations again. And we have four countries that over the last few years had similar deep impacts into their tourism uh, uh, performance. All four countries here, Thailand, Switzerland, Japan, well Japan a little bit less, but Thailand, Switzerland and Nepal depend largely on tourism. Tourism is very, very important. And yet we all have these waves, this situation, these impacts. And to get out of it, out of it that's, that's, the, that's the job, that's the task. And you know, it is hard work. And it is immediate work. And it is one voice work. Um, the reality is the communication after such a tragic event is crucial. Um, you uh, cannot remain in the earth's quick communication pattern, although you must have the information ready. But what happened with the earthquake? It has to be precise information. Where can you go? Where can you not go? So information is important, fact is important, but then it's about promotion of the product and services. Um, Tourism has to find its new language, new services, new products, new ideas, new pictures, new promotions. We will continue with this discussion after a short break. Welcome back. You are watching Youth TV show on Career Counseling Center. Why international relation is key to all our future? You know, we're, we're talking about 200 nations plus we're talking about 300 major ethnic group and we're talking about the transport and communication concept which connects us even faster and faster and faster and faster. I was talking about Lady Gaga. Lady, Lady Gaga is here without even having ever set foot in Nepal. Um, international relation is, is key because you cannot control your suppliers anymore. They can come from everywhere. International relation is key because your stakeholders can come from anywhere. You might work for a trading company and tomorrow that trading company is sold to an Indian company. International relation is key because your competition can come from everywhere. You thought you have a little business here in Kathmandu protected and safe with your fixed little clients and suddenly somebody from Bangladesh comes with an internet solution and you're out of business. Um, there is no reliability anymore how the world functions and that means that's why I was talking about this flexibility in the beginning and the ability to understand that within change anything can happen and you might in fact be dealing with an Indian client sit sitting in London and with his staff sitting in Los Angeles. And uh, international relation is not only just know people somewhere, international relation is the ability to see in any business what impact does this have to what we do here. And you know, Nepal, I don't have to tell you, is part of the world, even, even that not everything is perfect yet, but you're, you're a strong, powerful, interesting, fascinating, alive nation with a new constitution, wonderful day to come here as well. You better learn that um, there is an international element in your identity. And if, if this country becomes even more settled in a political point of view, if tourism comes up, you will find suddenly all these foreign investors pushing back. Indian investor first in line and then everybody else, the Americans and, and everybody else. 
So you better learn how to deal with the world, but it also means you have to learn to accept, to understand, to treasure who you are. Not only as a person, as we were talking in, in your own finding of career building, but also as a nation. And to say we're from Nepal, that's good. And we're going to build up an identity here and this identity. If somebody wants to come from Peru or from the Emirates or from Australia and wants to do business with it, I show him somebody up, upright, strong from Nepal and I say, yes, sir, namaste, we're on equal terms. You have been involved in various sectors and you also have been able to establish yourself as a dynamic person in all of these sectors. So what were the challenges you felt and how did you cope with them to be a successful person? First of all, I'll, I'll tell you that I had my defeats too. I mean, I did not do everything right. Um, but that's not, that's not the objective. I mean, you, you tried to to make something good and be successful. First step was, was the classic tourism that I did with the National Tourist Office, uh, with the tour operating in Japan and so on. The second step was the, the conference and meeting business, uh, building that company MCI and, and doing international conferences and meetings and incentive travel and general assemblies. I've done that for 20 years and now I work as a journalist and I work as a speaker and a teacher. Uh, the truth is, this was not planned. I can really say no analytical, no academic planning, just a process of what's next. And, and sometimes you need one or two or three years to find out and you have to grow into that. And that inner force is so strong for me that I feel as energetic today as I felt. And I remember this energy and it's not always there. It's not always there. Um, but when I have this energy, I know you got to do something. And, and you're good in this and the information that you're missing for example as a journalist my English ability you're going to inquire it you're going to you're going to write out those stories you're going to make good pictures you, whatever you need so it is again with the whole noise social media media advertisement the whole bang 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 that we have around us it's it's so difficult to stay sane and that's why that center here is important that you say, hey, come on, what, Daniel, what do you want? What do you, what's next? So it, the sooner you learn, or the, the faster or the quicker, the sooner you learn this, the faster you can influence your life and it becomes your life rather than the, the lives of your employers or your partner or your parents, with all respect, it becomes your life. You have worked in different countries. So how do you adapt yourself to the particular countries, hospitality and tourism industry with their language and everything? You know, when I, when I came to Japan, I was actually worried of earthquakes and I was worried of raw fish. I couldn't imagine to eat raw, but besides raw fish and earthquakes, it was, it, was, it was a sensation to be in Japan. This was never difficult. I, um, I, lived, I don't, didn't live in 13 countries. I, I worked and lived in, in, in six countries. Um, uh, this was always, I was always uh, st stimulated, you know. But the basic ingredients had to be there. Love to travel, ability to speak everywhere somehow. I mean, again, I don't have an academic background in terms of language. Uh, education and so on, but I always manage to use my hands and you know I speak some uh, a couple of languages but in the end of the day it's English and then in Japan I start eventually I learned I started to learn Japanese uh, television and it became a, it became a, a flow a smooth flow and that was always important for me to be honest when I was 20 I was not very good in ad adapting to foreign you had a uh, event management company right so like uh, talking dif having a difference between a tourism and the event management company which one is more productive in case of money making good question um, you know I had not much decision making in this this was I was 16 I was um, I, f I finished my um, ordinary nine years of um, compulsory school. In Switzerland, we have a concept called um, apprentice, which is a three years element. And during that, those three years, you have to decide for a certain trade. Imagine you're 16 and you have to dis make a decision for a three years period. It's, it's really scary. And, but I thought, no, the travel business, that's good for me. And the funny thing is that I, went there and they put me first for one and a half years in a department which was called 
incoming department Japan. And little did I know that years later I would come to Japan and I would spend a substantial part of my life and my, my education in Japan. But you know, with 16 sometimes things happen the right way. But I believe today that this is a, fairly, a, a completely normal uh, decision making. How we can establish our career in global tourism and travel industry? As a person, how you can do this? Yes, sure. Right. The first step is to generate your interest and to read in and to benchmark and to go on the net and to ask people and to, to meet some travel agents here or some hoteliers or some specialists, talk to them, find out what's happening. Of course, tourism in, in Nepal at the moment is not very, very successful, but don't worry. I tell you that, that the wind of change will come again and if you're, if you're there, then you can surf that next wave. You can serve it, but it's your own interest that, that generates that. And if then you decide, okay, I need education or I need to go abroad, uh, I need to go abroad, that would be the best thing for me, or I just need to work somewhere, six months, 12 months, try to get a job. If this is your past that you say, for me, I don't necessarily need to go to school right now. I don't necessarily, I really just want to work with tourists. Then you do that. Then you find, try to find a job with an agent, with an operator, with an airline uh, and, and start working. So there are many ways. You have been working for the global tourism and travel industry and emerging your business in Asia too. And what are the roles that Nepal's tourism and travels can play for the development of tourism and travel industry in Nepal? This needs a lot of time, but the truth, of course, is Naples has to step forward with um, its identity in terms of uh, self-secureness and pleasure and enjoyment and knowledge. This is good. It's good to be from Nepal and we're going to go out and we're going to sell and we're going to find our audiences. And the audiences for Nepal are not everywhere in the world. There are for certain segments in India, for certain segments in Europe, for certain segments in China or in Japan or in Australia and so forth. But, but um, that has to, that's, that's a major, major, major work and it needs a, it needs a change of, of mentality. It needs young people in the tourism industry who are creative, who create new products and services and who dare to sell. Um, and of course it also needs Kathmandu as a hub to be built up the airport, the streets, what's already happening, the hotels, I'm staying at a wonderful hotel, there need to be more hotels, so I think Kathmandu has to develop also as destination rather than as a transit. How to make a balance between different career, taking every changes in life positively? I have to go to the Himalayas to find the answer for that question. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you suffer in life too. You, you have lonely days, you have... Um, um, uh, d d d sometimes you just don't know whether you're on the right track. Sometimes you just... You f you, sometimes you just, you just don't know. And then, then it is important that you believe in the force to maneuver your full identity even you, if you analytically cannot cope with the situation anymore. So that, that means the more you build up your identity as a, as a being, as a person, as a value, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an identity and as a destiny, the more you build this up, the stronger you become even if it's stormy weather. Even if it's stormy weather. And you know, again, in, in, in my case, the career went like this. And today I see there was one long, smooth river. I had no idea. But I just always listened to the forces and I looked at these people that I met and I, I made choices that I met a lot of people. And I more, more likely I would not choose to go with a person than I would select a person. And then you go through that, but um, you'll have lonely nights and fearful nights and days. And this is, uh, there is no way around this. There is no perfect package here. And then the changes are even more fearful. I remember, for example, when I, um, when after I was in Paris for three years and my time with the tourist office was done and I was not motivated anymore and I didn't do a very, I didn't do a very demanding job. And I was, you know, in the evening I was 
frustrated somehow. And then one day it was finished. It was over. I said, I have to go. Thank you. And so I, I looked for a new job and I found in the newspaper there was an ad and it said, which young guy has the guts to go to Japan? <laughs> Me? I was never in Asia. I had no idea. So I went to Japan. And then I remember the last night in Paris. I, was, I, was, I stayed in a little hotel. My apartment was empty. And, uh, and the next day I had this, that flight to do this Tokyo that I had no idea of, you know, except where it was. I didn't know what, what was coming at me. And uh, th that's pretty lonely. I mean, there you are between two benches and you don't know, and, and you have to go through that. It's very difficult and you cannot just do it with alcohol. Um, that's one way, but then the next day you have to go to the plane. So th those, those moment, moments will be, they come back. And, Every time you conquer these moments, you become stronger. So they are part of your package. If I look at my career, I thought that there are some patterns and some experiences, and some learnings in my backpack, in my rucksack, and some defeats and some mistakes I made and some successes that I had. And, um, and I try to summarize this somehow to young audience like you around the world, particularly here in Asia as well, in China and here in Nepal and try to find it in a, in a framework. What can I tell you? What, how, how can I share my experience? And also the, not the joy, but the satisfaction about it. And I look back at my career and I say, wow, this was really exciting. And it gives me so much energy that I look forward to my next career step. And I say, wow, so exciting because of the learning I did in terms of my life, my career, in the hospitality industry, in the meetings industry, in the communication industry, in the media industry as well. And now at, at, in, in my third stage of life uh, as, as, a, as a lecturer. In a way, you are all the CEO of your own identity. You're the finance director, you're the HR director, you're the chairman, you're the owner. You are the management of yourself. And in management, you will choose very carefully who you do business with and who are the people that you entrust and that you take on board. And I suggest and initiate to propose you to do the same. So to be the master of yourself. If you need counseling regarding further education and career choices, you can visit Leadership Academy Career Counseling Center, which is open to you every Sunday and Wednesday. For registration, you can call us at 014257250. Our mobile number is 9861155900. You can email us at leadershipacademyktm at gmail.com or visit us at facebook.com slash leadershipacademyktm. Thank you for watching. Namaste. My, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Namaste.